Now that we've studied different ways of proving congruence of triangles using sides and angles, we're going to look at what it means to have corresponding parts of these congruent triangles. So here I have two triangles that are congruent to each other by side, side, side. It's interesting though that if I take one of them and impose it upon the other, you'll notice that not only the sides are congruent to one another, but the angles are as well. So what we end up having is these angles are congruent, these ones are, and the last are as well, using the third angle postulate. So once we have established any form of congruence between triangles with any of the methods that we have learned thus far, what that will lead to is the fact that all parts are congruent to each other in corresponding sets. So if it's in the same location, same general type, it will be congruent. And the way we talk about this is by bringing up an a acronym. It's CPCTC. And what that stands for is that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So as long as we can establish the congruence of the minimum required three items, we can establish that anything that corresponds is congruent as well. So let's take a look at how we can use this to help us in doing proofs. We're going to use the corresponding parts idea and the information that we have here in order to establish other parts that we don't know yet. So given that AB is congruent to DB, so we're going to mark this on our triangle, and EB is congruent to CB, we need to prove, or what we're looking for, is that angle A is congruent to angle D. And that blue one is what we're trying to look for. So we need to establish that these triangles are congruent to begin with. So one thing that we do know that we can add into this is that angle AEB, angle A, sorry, ABE, is congruent to angle DBC. And the reason for that is that they are vertical angles. Now, since we have that part, we can say that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DBC. And the reason for that is we have a side angle side postulate that has come out. Now, since the two triangles are congruent, all corresponding parts would be. That leads us to the fact that angle A is congruent to angle D by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Once we get that base idea of congruence of the figure overall, we can start picking apart individual points. Let's take a look at how this has been used. In there was a Greek philosopher who once came up with, the, his name was Thales. The idea was that if he could stand on top of a tower and use a form of protractor, two straight lines, one perpendicular to the ground, one angling out to sea, looking at a ship, so if this was at sea level, one coming down, perpendicular to the ground, the other angling out to see a ship at sea, he would then take that same setting and look the other direction and find a tree or some sort of object that could be located and the distance measured to it. And the idea was that however far it was from the tree to the tower would be the same distance as it was to the boat to that same tower. And you could find the distance if an approaching army or approaching navy was coming of finding it. But why does this work? Well, by setting the angle with his protractor from the top and keeping that same angle, 
both would end up being 90 degrees to the ground and sharing the height of the tower, the two triangles are going to be congruent by angle side angle postulates. And once we have the angle side angle, all corresponding parts would be congruent to one another and the distance from the tower to the tree would have to equal or be congruent to the distance from the tower to the boat. So using this idea as far back as two or three thousand years ago, mathematicians have been able to calculate unknown distances by using distances that they knew. So corresponding parts is going to be very important in triangles but also in other congruent figures we'll study. Uh, look over the ideas that are presented here and make sure you're ready to use them.